Welcome back. This is leg number 15. Yes, 15, not 14. 14 happened yesterday, but we had a complication. Young Charlie was supposed to be up in the air, taking a very dramatic aerial view of the of the island, showing where I had gone and where I need to go. Her surrounded by sort of, you know, Rocky Balboa type uh, backtrack on it. But the reality was they got socked in once they got up in the air. So no video. It was a tremendous swim though. I was joined by two uh, members of the U.S. Coast Guard who were kind enough to give me this very impl impressive uh, recognition of uh, the cooperation that noticeability has done with the Coast Guard. They were kind enough to join me. Uh, a little bit alarming yesterday. I showed up at the beach and because I'm with these two Coast Guard officers, everyone comes running up to him saying, is it true? Is it true? Is it what is going on? They say there's a dead whale carcass which has been killed by a shark attack. Nobody else in the water. So my buddy Brad Gerstner and I said, gotta stick to the schedule. Went in, did our two mile swim and uh, I don't know if that really happened. Uh, we're still waiting to, you know, island rumors spread so I don't know if it's true or not. But anyway, here we are, leg number 15. I'm about to jump in the water. We had an opportunity earlier to speak with a gentleman named Dan, who is one of my sponsors and also a proud brother in the LD community. So I'm gonna segue into him and I'll see you after I get out of the water. Thanks. Be all right, everything. Gonna be fine, everything. Gonna be so I'm sitting here with a, uh, a good friend and a uh, very successful entrepreneur here on Martha's Vineyard named Dan Sauer. And Dan is the owner of this wonderful establishment 7A, which is Incidentally, the best place to get <laughs> snacks and grub Thank anywhere you. when you're headed up island on Martha's Vineyard. Note to self, that's <laughs> the way to do it. So you and I, uh, you and I got in discussion about uh, dyslexia and learning differences. And you, uh, and I really appreciate it, you were candid enough to um, confide in me that you struggled as well. Tell me a little bit about what that was like. So, you know, I grew up in a small town in Montana and um, around third grade I would say really started having problems concentration and and writing and uh, reading comprehension things like that and at the time there wasn't a lot of diagnosis or even you know there was like slow kids and then there was not slow kids yeah. that's sort of how it got um, differentiated and I I started go I, I've been on medication since I was in third grade so I'm 37 and, you know, it's a long time, 25 years. Um, it helped immensely at points. At points it was, I think, a struggle for me to take the medication, remember those kind of things. And one of the big, big, biggest things looking back for me was like there was no, it's like the, the medication was, was it gonna be a magic pill? That's sort of how people viewed it. Yeah. You give it to me and then I'll be better. There yeah. was no like, maybe your brain works different. Maybe you need to study this way. Yeah. Maybe you need a different type of learning environment or more time on tests, things like that. So I struggled in school. Um, I got my first F in I think third or fourth grade and the nun had never given an F out that gave me the F. You had talked about like what that does to a kid. Sometimes it leads to insecurity and um, acting out and I had a really great home life a very strong support my parents were tough but they you know they loved me and my brothers were great so I didn't necessarily act out in a way that was um, violent or aggressive but I became the class clown and I had that reputation from you know third grade until senior high school that's what I got class clown and that's sort of the way I dealt with it was with humor making jokes and sometimes that went too far and I did get in trouble but um, it was tough, you know, and I, I never ever felt like I had it all together academically. Um, yeah. And that, you know, lasted a while. How did you go from the third grader with an F to, to the entrepreneur that you are today? I would say there was two things that really helped me in life and continue to help me. And one was the sport of wrestling, yeah. which I found. I was small, 
very small in junior high and high school, um, particularly freshman and sophomore year, I barely weighed 100 pounds. And I loved sports. I loved playing sports. Like, that kept my nose above water yeah. as far as, like, academically. If I could get a C or a D, uh, I could still play the sport. So yeah. that's what I worked towards. Yeah. And it was hard. It wasn't like I was slacking. You know, I was trying, and my goal was to be able to play the sport. Um, and then I found cooking, and that was like sophomore year. I'd always worked in food service, not thinking it was something I would ever want to do, but I worked for the Billings Mustangs. Yeah. They're the uh, single-A um, minor league team of the Cincinnati Reds. Yeah. Without really realizing, I really started to love the, the buzz of a restaurant. We decided to move here in 04, start a family, and uh, I was the chef at the Outermost Inn for about yeah. six years. Yeah. Uh, and then we opened this about five years ago, and, I, you know, Cooking has allowed me to a have a career, a, a successful career. I've cooked all over the country. I've met famous people, not famous people. It's just, you know, the career really sort of came in at the right time for me, and it just sort of hit all the buttons.